Welcome back, everyone. Today, this is Biz Becalio, and today <laughs> I'm actually going to be reviewing or reacting to a video that a friend recommended to me on Discord. <laughs> it's a uh, how Koreans took back Los how roof Koreans took back Los Angeles, featuring the donut operator. <laughs> so, um, ooh, let's change that a little bit. Now a little bit of lore about me. I am actually Korean, and so um, <laughs> you can just tell when I got this from my friend, it <laughs> the title made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, so yeah, the reason why I thought that it was a little bit funny is because I like to think of myself as a as a little bit of a chill guy. And I don't take events to a lot of things. So <laughs> uh, my friend sent this to me knowing that either A, I might ask him like, what the, f like, what the fuck? Or B, uh, like, huh, funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, okay, so link will be, in, link to the original video will be in, this, in the description. And let's go. Wednesday, April 29th, 1992. Chaos erupts in the streets of Los Angeles as tens of thousands of looters pillage the city. And with emergency services unavailable, business owners were left to fend for themselves. Now, of all the stories told of the infamous 1992 LA riots, none have scratched the surface between myth and legend, like the story of a group of Korean immigrants taking arms on rooftops. <laughs> Korean this immigrants. Is that story. Yeah, that's a little loud. Ugh, it's kind of cold today. <laughs> In April of 1992, four LAPD officers were tried following one of the most controversial excessive force incidents in American history. And after the Rodney King Why does it always come back to excessive force? Jesus Christ. The crowd began to turn 
physically violent, seriously injuring bystanders and other members within the crowd, absolutely polarizing the community and devastating business owners. Jesus Christ. The growing number of rioters in the street began attacking civilians, throwing debris at cars, pulling people from their vehicles, smashing shop windows, and setting them on fire. The chaos had sent shockwaves into the living rooms of millions of Americans across the nation, as a Chinese immigrant by the name of Choi Su Choi and a trucker named Reginald Denny, who was delivering gravel for the construction of low income were both horrifically attacked during live coverage of the riot. Oof. At approximately 7.15 p.m., as reports of vandalism, looting, and physical attacks continued to come in, Lieutenant Mullen collected to take the information, but not respond. Mullen was later relieved by a captain... What are you doing? ...to assess the Florence and Normandy area. And at 12.15 a.m., Mayor Bradley signed an order for a dusk to dawn curfew, as well as declaring a state of emergency. And on the following day, by mid-morning, violence appeared widespread, as extensive looting and arson was witnessed across Los Angeles County. The rioting moved from South Central Los Angeles, going north through Central Los Angeles, decimating the neighborhoods as far as Westlake to Fairfax, before reaching Hollywood. The looting and fires engulfed Hollywood Boulevard, and simultaneously rioting moved away neighboring independent cities of Compton, Carson, and Long Beach. You might even remember Long Beach native Bradley Noel singing about it on Sublime's self-titled album. I was born a few years after this, so I don't know anything about that. From Olympic Street to 120th Street laid the forefront of many small family-owned local businesses, primarily owned by first-generation Korean immigrants, many of whom escaped from North Korea and to South Korea before immigrating to the United States many of whom were formerly voluntold soldiers who knew how to fight. And the fight came to Koreatown rather swiftly, as rioters moved up north from Florence and Normandy with a newfound thirst for looting. At 11.30 a.m., one employee of a local gun store, David Ju, was working behind the counter when the shop's phone rang. It was a phone call from his employer, Richard Park, who owned another store a few doors down. Richard informed David that he was at the nearby shop David locked up the gun store, ran across the parking lot, armed with a Beretta. When he arrived, he heard gunshots, at which point looters from across the street made their way to the gun shop plaza and opened fire on Richard and David. But when the two men fired back, the assailants fled the area immediately. Word quickly spread throughout Koreatown that this method had worked, not only protecting back in heat. property, but his life. Korean business owners who caught word of this began to phone in a Los Angeles-based radio station called Radio Korea pleading to the radio station's audience for an armed response to help protect their property. Everybody caught in the street, and they took them everything, liquor, you know, beer. When you got here, you said people were still inside the store. What did you do? Three inside. I shut the, you know, eight times, everybody moved. A merchant guarding his property. You got anybody out there? Just a shot. I guess lesson to be learned here is... Actually, no, no lesson to be learned, because uh, I know it's the American Second Amendment to have the right to carry arms, but uh, oh God, I did not mean to get political, Jesus Christ, uh, just just stay safe, people. Like, geez. Like, stay safe. Do whatever you can. I'm gonna get demonetized for this, aren't I? I'm not even monetized yet. Responding to thousands of ongoing emergencies. 
Nine millimeter Uzi. Korean American identity. What is this Korean American identity? I don't know what that is. <laughs> and and I'm a first gen uh, and Korean American. So, <laughs> like, anyone who knows what that Korean American identity is, please tell me. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> this is literally the first time I'm hearing about that. <laughs> Saigu has become a memorial for Korean Americans. It's a, mo it's a moment of profound sadness and loss, a feeling so targeted and so abandoned. That's the end of the video. Yeah, that's the end of the video. So, uh, all right. So, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below what you think I could have done better. Um, obviously, comment what I should react to next, please. I. I'll even react to the things I've or, I've already seen, but like, yeah, any and all suggestions are welcome. Uh, at the time I am recording this, actually, um, Monday the sixteenth, January, I will be 
Uh, this will probably be going up tomorrow, the 17th. And so... Uh, so I will be live on Twitch, January 18th, Wednesday. I'm trying to decide either between or either from 1 or 2 p.m. or 6 p.m. EST, which I think is like GMT minus 5. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, pro I'll probably experiment first. Um, Wednesday on 1 p.m. and then Friday at like 6 p.m. just to just to let you guys know. All right. So thank you for watching. Rem please remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below what I should react to next. And have a good day.